Test, test. I think we are live for day two. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody that's live. Welcome, everybody that is catching the replay as well. Uh, thank you for attending day two. Let me know if you can hear me in the chat and uh, let me know. Oops, got to turn this off while I listen to myself over here on my side monitor. Uh, let me know, like, how are your sales going so far in January of 2022? How are your merch sales going? I want to I want to hear from you guys and um, I'm going to show you how my sales went yesterday. And then I think tomorrow I'll show you how my sales did today. And uh, why not? Why not do that? You know, just to keep it interesting. Uh, also, let me know where you guys are from. Uh, how How is uh, how's the weather out there? Uh, as I say that the sun is making an appearance over here in Virginia, probably not enough to melt what's left of the snow but hopefully like my car does not drive in snow at all. So I just kind of get stuck, which is okay. Cause I don't have to leave the house. <laughs> but back when I had my nine to five job, uh, it was a mess. Uh, fortunately, like one of my closest friends worked with me at the same company. I mean, I ended up getting him a job there. And so we would basically just carpool, but there would be like weeks at a time where we would be carpooling to work and he would have to drive. <laughs> oh man. I need to, I need to kind of, I need to probably consider getting a, a better car. But, all right. We got Vegas, New York. Jason said sales are slow, uh, slow sales, terrible sales. Well, ah, man, hopefully we can fix that. Oh, there we go. David said from Facebook can hear you. Sales are down Syracuse, Wisconsin. Shout out Wisconsin, man. We were just watching, uh, I was rewatching making a murderer on Netflix with Marielle. If you guys have seen that, do you remember a couple years ago when that was like super, super like viral, like everybody was talking about it. So we were rewatching that show cause she hadn't seen it. Um, Greece, shout out to Paul, sunny and 15. I need to do a conversion of 15. What is 15? 15. All right, that's 59 Fahrenheit, got it. Uh, hopefully, man, hopefully we can fix some of your guys' sales, uh, so far for me, it's been like, you know, not, not, not as good as December was, but, uh, picking back up kind of on the upslope. What up Curtis? Thank you for stopping by Curtis. He, uh, he's the guy who made merch Titans. So shout out to Curtis, shout out merch Titans, shout out my designs, the new project, slow sales, no sales, Jesus traders back again. Christopher sent in love from California. Shout out California. Haven't been there in a while. Tampa from Puerto Rico. Shout out Carlos. Cool. All right. It's a, it's one Oh three. Uh, we can probably just like get started. Um, want to be respectful of everybody's time. Another person from California. Shout out Joe Scotland, eight degrees. <laughs> all right. Um, eight degrees. Wait, Celsius. Uh, all right there. So we got to convert that again, which probably means it's not as, as cold as it sounds. Oh, another person from California, Georgia. What's up, Teresa? I got to like look through my microphone at my side monitor here as I try to read these. Cool. Why don't we get started and uh, let's see, you know, what we can cover today. I will try to monitor the chat on the, you know, out of the corner of my eye as I go in case you guys have uh, a couple of quick questions related to what we're talking about. Uh, but to start, why don't I do a reintroduction very quickly because i already did one yesterday in the first session um so anyways this is our pretty merch live stream number two for our four-day webinar series they invited me to host this and i love talking about merch by amazon i love pretty merch uh definitely like the first thing that comes to mind when i think of a new merch by amazon seller literally the first thing i say is go download pretty merch <laughs> it's like the first thing because if you just stare at that ugly normal dashboard you kind of lose interest pretty quickly. At least I, like I can imagine people do. So the first thing you want to do, go grab pretty merch. Uh, that's going to help you with um, just keeping it interesting and getting some, some valuable data. Okay. Oh, we got from Bangladesh, from India, from Morocco, from Africa, Tanzania. That's awesome. Thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, real quick, I'm going to go through what we kind of did yesterday just to introduce myself and get then we're going to get to research. We're going to talk about research today. So my name is Ryan Hogue. Seven-figure print-on-demand seller, seven-figure Amazon FBA seller, uh, ex-adjunct professor, ex-senior front-end web developer, and still a Chihuahua lover. Uh, that is Pablo, my micro Chihuahua. Shout out to him. 
Uh, I was going to, again, I was going to show him on the live stream, but he decided to go take a nap. For some reason, he loves sleeping under the bed. He likes it dark. So he is under the bed and um, I'll go get him after this <laughs> and wake him up. Uh, a reminder, I'm not affiliated with Merch by Amazon in any way. So um, these views are just my own guys. Uh, my sales updated since yesterday. Uh, I've done 36,067 sales to date. Uh, the majority, vast majority come through um, the U.S. market. By the way, shout out Virginia Beach. Cindy, I'm in Virginia as well. I, haven't, I went to Virginia Beach a couple months ago to visit one of my friends who moved from Northern Virginia down there. Uh, how to get out of tier 100. Guys, we're, we're definitely going to cover some strategies that will help get you out of tier 100 today. So don't worry about that. Also, my sales from yesterday. I had a good day yesterday. Uh, $218 in royalties collected on 37 sales. And my personal approach, I'll elaborate on today because we are talking about research today. But my personal approach is not one that I think is that common. Uh, I personally just like to upload into a lot of random niches. Like for me personally, I'm in tier 200,000. Like I don't know that I'll ever run out of upload slots. So I can upload into niches without doing any research and any verification because I have upload slots to spare. So sometimes I'll just create my own niches. And from my sales yesterday, I was basically making like one sale per product across the board. I didn't have like one bestseller that carried the weight. It was more or less like at the high end, I had three sales of one design. After that, it was two sales. And after that, it was 30, was 30, 32. Yeah, 32 sales of 32 different designs in basically 32 different niches, just to be transparent. How many products with sales? Uh, I think I can show you that later. All right. So again, uh, this is this webinar series brought to you by Pretty Merch. If you guys are not using Pretty Merch for um, Merch by Amazon, the Chrome extension, go grab it. It is free and they do have some pretty cool functionality built into the app that is not free that you can upgrade to utilize. And I'm going to be kind of showing you guys how I utilize some of that stuff in these webinars, in addition to just providing you value independent of Pretty Merch. Our goal is to increase sales and we're going to do that by covering uh, well, first, there is no silver bullet. I like to bring actionable advice that, uh, you know, generally speaking, will work for most of the people watching, most of the people in attendance. There's no silver bullet. I'm not going to try to sell you something at the end of this and say, if you spend $1,000, you'll make all these sales that you couldn't make without spending it. I'm not going to do anything like that, guys. Uh, I like to be realistic here. So there's no silver bullet. The way we're going to increase our sales is following this curriculum. And then I said, I'm going to try to sprinkle in maybe on the last day, on day four sprinkle in some talk about running ads for those of you guys that have access to advertise. That is my plan. Okay. It is day two today. And we're going to talk about niche research because in my head, this is kind of the structure of what we should cover as Merch by Amazon sellers kind of in the order that we need to cover it in the order we need to know. So day one, we talked about more or less uh, the, the really basic stuff of like how Merch by Amazon works. It's not that hard to cover because what I love about Merch by Amazon as an opportunity to sell on Amazon is it's very pared down. It's very, it's weird to say, but it's like, it's restrictive. Anybody who sells through Seller Central, juxtapose Seller Central on top of Merch by Amazon. Merch by Amazon is like 1% of Seller Central. You know what I mean? Seller Central is like opening Pandora's box in, in a bunch of different ways. There's so much going on in Seller Central. Whereas in Merch by Amazon, it's like a very restricted, pared down way of selling on Amazon. So that's what we talked about day one. We talked about the content policy, keeping our accounts safe. That was a big thing. Day two, we're talking about niche research because once we have a niche, an idea of what we want to sell, then we go to day three, we design, and then we go to day four, we upload and advertise. You know, I don't want to spend too long on ads because I don't think most people have access to ads based on, you know, yesterday when I asked you guys what tier you were in. Um, but we're definitely going to talk about advertising strategy at, at least, you know, something that you can implement. Uh, as far as that that goes. And if you've never been in there, I mean, I don't know how long it'll take me, but maybe I can just do a quick tutorial of like how to launch an ad campaign. Because it's really, it's intimidating if you've never done it. Once you've done it a hundred times, doing it the hundred and first time is not intimidating at all. So, all right, day two though, we are talking about research today. All right, uh, tier 4,000, how to increase your sales. We're going to talk about that today. Christopher, tier 25 purgatory for six months, even though making sales that's brutal. Um, hopefully you get that next tier up, man. Hopefully. 
hundred thousand sales a day from Facebook ads. I've never run Facebook ads to Amazon. Well, for FBA, I actually did that recently. I did a video on it. Um, well, I didn't personally do it. I had an agency do it for me and it actually worked really well. Uh, it jumped my FBA product that was on the destination side from the eighth organic spot to the second organic spot. And that was during December where it's like the best time of year to be seeing that sort of a growth. So it was pretty awesome. I wouldn't do it for merch though. Cause I don't think you can, uh, track your conversions. Yeah. Merch by Amazon restrictive. Everybody's waiting for a tear up. You know, we're getting out of the fourth quarter guys. I talked yesterday about how in the fourth quarter in the past, I've seen them do things like not let new people in of the people that get in. I've seen them restrict how much you can upload. Or I've even seen, you know, three or four years ago at this point, I've seen them turn off your ability to upload. You know, I've seen them freeze tier ups. So the fact that you haven't been tiered up, it makes a little bit of sense given the, you know, what we've seen historically. So, um, you know, again, I don't work for Amazon. I don't have any contacts there. Nothing like that. I'm just speaking to my experience. All right. So research. Let's talk about that. Niche research is important, guys, but why, <laughs> right? Why is research so important? Now, before I state the obvious, I do want to acknowledge that it's not necessarily as important to uh, everybody in an equal way. Like I, like I said earlier, I'm in tier 200,000. I can put 200,000 products, well, designs. It's actually like 12 million products if you do the, the math, because remember, now that they changed how Merch by Amazon's uploads are counted, I upload one design. I can check uh, all products on all marketplaces. So UK, Germany, Italy, France, Spain, Japan, and all of the products available. When you do that math, I put one design on 64 products. And if I max out 200,000 times 64, it comes to like 12 million point something. So for what it's worth, I can put 200,000 designs for sale through my Merch by Amazon account research isn't as important to me. It just isn't right. Because if you're in tier 10, you don't need to be, or you do need to be a lot more, uh, intent and, uh, do a lot more research with the products that you sell because you have, you know, you upload one design, that's 10% of your slots. 10% of my slots is 20,000, right? So it's, you know, it's, it's definitely when you put it like that, it's a, uh, it, there's a pretty big disparity there, but of course, you know, you're in tier 10, you're eventually going to get to tier 25. 25 to 100, 100 to 500, et cetera. We got someone from Germany. Shout out Germany. Uh, would really like the benefit of how to run ads. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely make time. Uh, I just don't know how much we'll have. Thanks for the inspiration. First year, so wasn't aware. They slowed down tier ups. Yeah, yeah, Michael, no problem. Yeah, if you've just gotten into merch recently or even in the last two years, it's like you learn along the way, right? And it's a changing landscape. Like they've been getting better and better. They used to run low on uh, certain SKUs in Christmas. So like you try to order a black shirt size XL sold out or like black size XL female, you know, sold out. Right. So we've seen, they're getting a lot better. You know, they've done a great job this past Christmas. I think they did a great job. Uh, but why is research so important guys? Generally speaking, the main point that I wanted to make is like, if you're selling something that people are looking to buy, the likelihood of you making a single sale drastically increases when you compare that to selling something that almost nobody's trying to buy. I know that's stating the obvious, but like sometimes we need to be reminded because <laughs> it's a weird thing, right? Like, I, I don't know what it is. I feel like as humans, it's easy to give, give great advice, but it's hard to like follow our own great advice. At least like I feel that way. You know, like I feel like I give better advice than I sometimes like follow myself. Um, so sometimes we need to be reminded, like, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that hard. If, if our end goal is just to make money, well, how do you make money? You make sales. How do you make sales? Sell things people are looking to buy, right? Like we can boil it down sometimes into like very high level concepts because sometimes we stray from them. <laughs> like it's weird, but we do. If you get caught up in your own head and you don't take a step back and kind of evaluate your business, it's like you can stray from these core principles that really do increase the likelihood of you achieving success. If success is making sales, which leads to you making money, which is probably why we're all here, right? Follow your customers. And what's cool is Amazon Unlike any of their competitors that I'm aware of, uh, they give us a data point that helps us project how well products are selling relative to other products in their category. For instance, like we're going to take a look at standard t-shirts today, uh, at least once. Standard t-shirts are the best-selling Merch by Amazon product 
And what's cool is they all have a data point called BSR, uh, best seller rank, I think is what it stands for. Best seller rank, best sales rank, something like that, right? BSR stands for, just to make sure I get it right. <laughs> best, uh, where is it? Let's just say best seller rank. I'm 99% sure that's what it is, all right? It's, it's how well a product is selling relative to other products in that category. If we're looking at Merch by Amazon standard t-shirts, they're all in the same category. There's only ever going to be one best seller at any time. And after that, it's the second best seller, then the third best seller, tens of millions of products, all right? Uh, so we're going to follow our customers and we're going to use the best seller rank, uh, the BSR for short, I'm going to call it BSR, as our guide to make informed decisions. Now, following customers is only one data point that we need to consider. Of course, on the flip side of that, there's competition. Because if everybody follows the customers, well, that niche is going to get very crowded very quickly. Uh, I do want to mention, I don't have a slide for it. Um, I do want to mention really quickly that Amazon in the past, you know how you do a keyword search on Amazon and in, in the top left corner, it says showing one through uh, 44 of, of 10,000 or whatever, you know, it used to say, it used to say showing products one through 44 of 200,000 showing one through 44 of 500 showing one through 44 of 125. Like they used to kind of guide us better than they do today of what our actual competition was. Like they used to actually give us a good idea of, of how crowded a niche was. Uh, today they do not give us much like they, they, they basically change that to make that data point of what our competition is, uh, harder to follow. Like it, it'll change sometimes. And if there's 200,000 shirts, they may say of 2000 plus instead of 200,000 plus or 20,000 plus, you know, and they reserve the right to do that because 2000 plus still encapsulates every number greater than 2000. So they made that change probably like two or three years ago. Uh, Thank you. They say bestseller rank. All right. That is what it stands for. BSR. Appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, just worth considering that uh, it's hard to gauge competition, but here's the last point I want to make before we move on from this slide. Gauging competition with print on demand is a lot less important than if we're doing, for instance, Amazon FBA, because when we do FBA, we put cash on the line. Like just today I had to wire uh, not a supplier I had to wire. I do FBA. I had to wire my freight forwarder. All right. And that's money on the line. It was over three grand to ship products from China to the United States. Cause unfortunately Amazon made me send it to two different destinations, which they didn't used to do. And as you would imagine, when you have to ship it to two places, instead of one prices go up. So, um, dropping my profit margin, but you know, it is what it is. We're at, we're at Amazon's mercy. So I'm already 3000 plus the cost of producing those products in the hole with Amazon FBA. I need to be a little bit more you know, intent and do more research, both our customers buying this product and what does the competition look like? I want a better picture of the landscape because I've got money on the line and more time on the line. With Amazon merch and print on demand in general, what are we really risking? It's just our time. Now, I, I mean, time is money, of course, we gotta protect our time, but like, if you get it wrong in a t-shirt niche or a niche selection, what are you really out? You're out some time you move on, right? <laughs> and depending on how much time you spent on things like design or keyword research, which we'll talk about both of those tomorrow and the next day, you know, you're fine, right? So it's not as big of a deal. So just be cognizant of these things because they matter. You know, you don't need to go to the lengths that you do for an FBA product launch for a print on demand product launch. Cause if your print on demand products unsuccessful, it's not the end of the world, right? All right. So I want to make a suggestion before we go and do some like live research, I want to suggest a couple tools for you to check out that are a core part of my research process, the vast majority of which are free. Okay. And I will tell you when they're uh, paid. Okay. The first one that I want to recommend is DS Amazon Quick View. This Chrome extension is like a godsend. Now it doesn't actually do anything that, <laughs> that you can't do without the extension. Uh, because essentially what the, what, what I use this Chrome extension for, cause I know there's a paid version of it, but I don't use the paid version <laughs> is it puts the products BSR, you know, that data point of how well a product is selling relative to other products in that category. It puts the BSR underneath products in search results. So we can do a keyword search on Amazon 
And without having to click each product and look at the BSR, which is if you scroll down the page, it'll you'll find it underneath the product details. We can just look at the search results and do a quick scroll and get a get a feel for how well that niche is selling today. You know, BSR, by the way, it's constantly being refreshed. It's constantly being updated to reflect new data. It's done at unknown intervals, but it happens, you know, multiple times throughout the day. So that is worth remembering when we're talking about uh, Amazon, re you know, niche research and whatnot. It is a good way of getting a glimpse into like what's actually happening, you know, right now. Uh, so being able to see BSR in the search results underneath each product, to me, I like to move quick. I like to prioritize efficiency when I'm running my various online businesses. I love it. So DS Amazon Quick View, completely free. If you guys are on YouTube watching this video, it, I put a link to everything I'm going to show you in the description to make it easy. Uh, you do need to be on Google Chrome, the web browser, in order to use uh, DS Amazon Quick View as it's a Chrome extension. All right. So, and by the way, guys, if you can see the BSR underneath the products, the lower the BSR, the higher the sales velocity. So that is worth keeping in mind. All right. The next one I wanted to recommend is Helium 10. Helium 10 has a whole suite of tools for Amazon sellers. The main reason I want to recommend Helium 10 does not require you to pay for Helium 10. All you need to do is make a free account and install the free Chrome extension. Then what it's going to do is when you view a product detail page, which means you actually click the product from search results and you scroll underneath it, it's going to show you price history and BSR history. Okay. Again, the lower the BSR, the better, but I like being able to see BSR over time. That's exactly what it does right here. So you can actually set the time frame as well for the BSR history. You'll notice at the top there, uh, I'm looking at the 30 day BSR history of an Amazon merch t-shirt. And you can see that uh, kind of like an inverse correlation, this seller is choosing to increase the price. So they're increasing their profit as the BSR gets lower and lower. Okay. But I was looking at it on a 30 day time frame. When you zoom out and you see the chart at the bottom there, I, cl I clicked all time. What you notice is that this shirt appears to have been launched in about January of 2021. And I'm going to venture, I guess they run or they ran a bunch of ads to this shirt, which is probably why they had such great success right away. Uh, Cause you can see the BSR kind of jumps off a cliff there and it goes really low in Fre February. And then out of February, it climbs and it climbs and it climbs to about 600,000 BSR. And then up until about January of 2022, all of a sudden the BSR gets really good again and falls off another cliff. Low BSR equals higher sales. What we're looking at here is seasonality. Okay. It appears, even though I didn't put a picture of the shirt and I apologize, uh, you can probably guess that if this shirt is selling extremely well around February each year and not well outside of February, showing strong sign of seasonality, that it's probably what a Valentine's day shirt or some other, you know, February holiday. Uh, in this case, it was a Valentine's day shirt. So this is really useful for merch, but also for FBA and just selling on Amazon in general. I would recommend Helium 10. The next one I wanted to recommend, this is a paid tool. So it's definitely not required. Definitely not required. I would definitely go recommend DS Amazon Quick View and Helium 10 because that's going to cost you $0. And I absolutely love these two tools. They're a staple in my research process. Jungle Scout is nice if you do have it. Like I use it primarily for Amazon FBA. Uh, it's projections for sales on, you know, print on demand products is a little bit harder. Definitely. Uh, I just had one of the chihuahuas running here. Come here, buddy. Oh. Say hello. This is Onyx. What's up, buddy? Boy, he's like crying. Good to see you. Okay. Got to do my live stream. Uh, <laughs> so Amazon FBA though, you can essentially do a keyword search on Amazon and then you can run the Chrome extension. When you run the Chrome extension, it attempts to project how well products in this niche are selling both at an individual uh, ASIN level, like at an individual listing level. So you can see here, I've got a data table behind me and they're trying to show me, you know, the relevant data points for each listing, like price, monthly sales, daily sales, monthly revenue, the date it was published. Uh, they estimate the, the profit per sale, but they don't actually know. And then you've got the uh, kind of like an aggregate data point that is supposed to represent the whole niche opportunity as a whole. Uh, and I don't really trust it for print on demand because it's really tough with print on demand since they don't give us the actual number of competition, but you can see it's called opportunity score. And in the top right corner there, it says six, that's a, out of a 10 point scale, 
Six, medium demand, low competition. A, if you see medium demand, low competition, and you want to gauge your niche selection off of Jungle Scout's um, suggestion, well, then this would be a great opportunity. But also keep in mind, guys, this is all subject to change. Right? You know what I mean? Like this can change in an hour, in 10 hours, in 24 hours. You know what I mean? With print on demand, the barrier of entry is low because we're selling products at no cost to us. So, so I'm just saying like with, with, um, with print on demand, like expect things to change. It's a changing landscape. Uh, Mercury vapor said cha-ching. He just got the pretty merch. Um, he got a pretty merch sale. Love that. Love that sound. Not going to lie. I had to turn off the cha-ching sound years ago. Cause I got tired of hearing it. Now you don't get tired of hearing it, but when I'm recording a video, for instance, if I hear a cha-ching in the background, uh, then everybody watching the video gets mad at me if I don't edit it out. Because they think that they just made a sale and they realize it was my uh, YouTube video. So, <laughs> all right. So Jungle Scout, though, it's worth knowing that it exists. I was fortunate when I first purchased Jungle Scout in like 2016, they had a lifetime deal. So I just paid a couple hundred bucks for a lifetime. So I still got it. I wanted to suggest Bubble Scout. Now, we've been talking mostly about the Amazon ecosystem because this is a Merch by Amazon webinar. But you can also do research off of Amazon. If you're not familiar with Redbubble, it is a uh, print-on-demand marketplace very similar to Merch by Amazon where you can sell at no cost to you. You just upload designs, provide keywords, and they provide the fulfillment and the marketplace. So they have the marketplace where customers come, and if you make a sale, they do all the work. They do customer service. They just pay you out of royalties. So it's a pretty good deal, guys. Uh, with the Bubble Scout Chrome extension, which you can grab for free, it will, if you install the Chrome extension, when you go to Redbubble, it will put a data table in the top of the website and show you the top 20 trending searches of that day. So you get up-to-date data from each day of what's trending best on Redbubble. Okay, now one thing to note, as we talked about yesterday about keeping our merch account safe, a lot of times what Redbubble allows Merch by Amazon will not allow. So you definitely want to remember if you are looking at any other website outside of Amazon's ecosystem and not even Amazon, it's really like there's Amazon and then there's Amazon Merch, right? When you publish something through Amazon Merch, it goes through a strict algorithmic approval system and ultimately gives it a yes or a no. If you publish through like Seller Central, you don't go through nearly the same strict system of, of checks. All right, it's a lot easier to go publish a LeBron James fake t-shirt through Seller Central. Now, will you eventually get in trouble? Yeah, you will. But will it immediately get rejected? No, it won't, right? So that's why when we're doing our research, you do kind of want to restrict the scope to just sell, uh, just evaluating Merch by Amazon products. And I'm going to show you how we do that again today. We talked about it briefly yesterday, but that is important, guys. It's important to remember. Uh, so Bubble Scout, though, it's a great way of getting a glimpse into, by the way, Bubble Scout's very international. So you definitely want to cater to your market. And if you're selling primarily in the U.S. market on uh, Merch by Amazon, then you're not going to, you know, this isn't as valuable, but it still can be very valuable. But you'll notice like the fourth thing right here on uh, Bubble Scout uh, from the trending searches on Redbubble that day, well, it's today, is Scott Morrison PM. So I Googled that and it's like the prime minister of Australia who's in some pretty hot water right now, according to the, the designs that are trending right now on Redbubble. Um, like that's not going to, nobody in America probably cares, right. Or, or knows, I don't want to speak for, on behalf of everybody, but like that's going to do well in Australia because Redbubble is an Australian company in the U S it's not going to translate probably into nearly as much interest or sales. Like that wouldn't crack the top 20 trending searches in America. And if that's the main market you're selling on, you know, just consider things like that. Uh, keywords everywhere. Another Chrome extension, by the way, I'm not just like shouting every Chrome extension at you possible. Like there is a method to the madness here and I use all of these regularly. Okay. So just so you guys know, I'm not just saying this to say it, um, keywords everywhere is a free Chrome extension. And a lot of these have like paid upsells, but you can just use the free version. And what it does is when you do a keyword search on Google, it gives you additional data about like that keyword on the sidebar. So it kind of just creates these little data tables on the sidebar in your Google search results. Uh, so it's kind of similar to what Helium 10 does with the BSR history, except this is like keyword trending history. So it's, uh, as this example, I searched for Tuesday shirt, the T-W-O-S-D-A-Y for um, those of you guys that aren't, that aren't aware of that niche that's coming. It's like February 
2022. So it's like a lot of twos and it falls on a Tuesday, of course. Uh, so those t-shirts uh, seem to be spiking in popularity every now and then. You can see if I set that back three months, it had virtually no search volume, but then all of a sudden a couple days in January, it's spiking. It's not seeing consistent search volume. So I wonder like how this is even getting out into the public uh, consciousness. But as you can see here, there are definitely, you know, people looking for this and something that's this brand new, by the way, like that's one takeaway from keywords everywhere. The lack of search volume. What does that mean? It means that you're gonna have a lack of competition, <laughs> right? I mean, most likely, uh, if, if no one was searching for it, then nobody's probably selling it. So if nobody's selling it, relatively new and fresh niche means probably less competition. Whereas if you want to like, you know, February is coming up. This is a big February niche. That's going to be popular around, you know, the 22nd of February. If you had to choose between, do I want to sell in the Tuesday niche or the Valentine's day niche? Which one are you more likely to have success in? I mean, I can't guarantee anything for you, but as a function of your competition, you are almost a sure thing to see less competition in a niche that didn't exist prior to this year versus Valentine's Day, which everybody knows is coming every single year, okay? Mm. Let's see, you got a question here. The Ralph Lauren fishing t-shirts on merch legit. I'm not antisocial. I'd ra just rather be fishing. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to tell. Sometimes, like keep in mind, man, it's not manual approval. Uh, a lot of times people will find a way to get things through the algorithm. But then ultimately, oh, I'm going to say the algorithm, I mean the approval rejection algorithm, but ultimately like, you know, you end up getting that thing removed and your account closed. You know, if you are truly selling something that you shouldn't be selling. So if that is like a Ralph Lauren, uh, trademark shirt, like you're probably going to get in big trouble whenever somebody reports it and then they'll just update the approval algorithm. So if you were to submit a new one, it'll get rejected. That's, that's my guess, by the way, I don't know this for sure. Uh, also keywords everywhere. If you install this free, uh, Chrome extension. They give you related keywords and they give you long tail keywords. All right. So sometimes you can stumble into new niches. Like for instance, we searched for Tuesday. Look at the related keywords. It's saying taco Tuesday. Okay. So the T W O S Tuesday and you're selling that shirt. And then all of a sudden you look at keywords everywhere and it says, Hey, by the way, people are looking for taco Tuesday shirts. And you're like, Oh man, it's a new sub niche within this big niche. Right. And you didn't have to do anything. You don't have to do any critical thinking. You just like install the app, do the search. And then boom, it's telling you based on it's data mining Google. So it's not even guesswork. It's like, this is actually happening. So you're just seeing what's happening and down there, long tail keywords. So that can help you with your listings, taco Tuesday shirt, taco Tuesday shirt, SVG. So if you're on Etsy selling SVG files, uh, maybe you go, you know, sell a couple over there, taco Tuesday, birthday shirt, boom, another sub niche related to Tuesday, birthday taco, uh, Oh, well, okay. Taco Tuesday, birthday. So it's taking Tuesday, Taco Tuesday and birthday and combining all three. So all these things are worth uh, considering. All right. I think we're almost done with the Chrome extension suggestions. And again, if you're watching on YouTube in the video description, I have links to all them. Uh, AMZ suggestion expander. It does what it sounds like when you are on AMZ, Amazon, and you perform a keyword search, the autocomplete, instead of it just being the default Amazon autocomplete, it will expand it to include keywords before, keywords after. It's basically just showing you uh, a less restrictive insight into what people are searching on Amazon related to that seed keyword that you typed in. Very valuable insights could be gained. It's not always guaranteed to be valuable. Uh, but I mean, for real though, honestly, when we're on like day number four and we're talking about uploading our designs and trying to get indexed on the most valuable keywords to our, our niches, like this is really a good way of figuring out like what keywords should we be targeting? You know, what keywords should we suggest to Amazon's algorithm to associate our listing that has zero sales because it's new with, okay. This is a great way of doing that because this is essentially showing us what the customers are typing into the, you know, into the search bar. Also worth mentioning, you can also just go to Google and do a keyword search and they do the same autocomplete for you. So it's not really the same. I mean, the whole point of these Chrome extensions is to expand it, give us better insights. All right. Taco Tuesdays live. Um, I guess, you know, really quickly, if you guys want me to, I can 
pull up the USPTO. Say Taco Tuesday with the W? Yeah, you did. Okay, let's see. I'm pulling it. I'll pull it over here in a second. Okay, really quickly, guys, just so that we're all on the same page about trademarks. When you do a trademark search, well, the first thing you should know is like, when you try to file a trademark, it takes a long time. It takes like nine to 12 months in my experience. That's intentional because there has to be a period for people to publish opposition for you to get that trademark. So if you want to trademark Taco Tuesday, you also have to specify like what goods you can trademark it on. So in this case, it's probably uh, on shirts, right? Uh, actually, they didn't even put it on shirts. They said non-medicated candy, fruit gum, sugar, jelly, licorice. Uh, I was expecting to see t-shirts, honestly. Um, but either way, like they may or may not actually get this through. And if they do get it through, actually check that out. Okay. They actually filed it in April 12th, 2021. If these guys were smart, they would have been selling t-shirts. They would have made a killing um, right now. But anyways, what I really wanted to do, cause I don't want to hijack this lecture is show you there's a column right here called reg number. All right. Registration number. If you don't see something under registration number, it's not registered. So it may say like live, but I think that just means that it's like moving forward in the trademark process and published for opposition. However, it hasn't gotten through that phase. And by the way, I'm not a lawyer, uh, two lawyers in my immediate family though. Um, so I lean on them for when I need stuff done, honestly. Um, I mean, why wouldn't I? Uh, but anyways, until you see something under reg number, you're good. But it is also worth mentioning that like, if you see live under live dead, then you look at filing date and it's April 12th, 2021. Well, that was eight, almost nine months ago. And I said that it takes nine to 12 months to get this through to where it actually is like live, live, you know, registered. This would actually worry me if I was selling non-medicated candy containing at least fruit gum, sugar, and jelly licorice. I mean, I'm not selling that though. If it said t-shirts, I would probably stay away because I may be able to publish it today. And then this may go re get like live registered tomorrow. And then all of a sudden my, I get pulled. And that's my understanding. Um, yeah, so that's a good question though. And that's probably hopefully good that we clarified that. However, I'm also not a lawyer, disclaimer, disclaimer, all that good stuff. All right, let's do a live demo uh, and do just kind of some some general research. I'll kind of show you my process. My process. Well, actually, the first thing I wanted to do, though, is just kind of remind you guys that I like to limit the scope of my research to just Merch by Amazon products. So if I'm doing niche research independent of any paid tools, because, I mean, you know, hey, the paid tools are great, by the way. I'm going to show you some. But let's say we're just getting started and we don't want to spend any money. Well, if I'm doing research for Merch by Amazon, I want to only look at Merch by Amazon products. I mentioned yesterday, this is also a great way of keeping your account safe. If there is some string of keywords that you're not sure you're going to be able to sell, well, type them in to the search Merch tool, which will filter out non-Merch products. And if you see that string of keywords and you see a bunch of shirts with them, you're probably okay. Uh, but if you don't, you know, we, we typed in Game of Thrones yesterday and there were results. However, it was from the actual Game of Thrones, whoever owns the rights to that brand. So, you know, that's, that doesn't mean that we're safe to sell it. That means we're probably not safe to sell it. So I like to start here. And this is typically what I would do if I'm just doing like um, Valentine's Day, I might do something like funny Valentine's Day, right? And I do a, oops, funny Valentine's Day, search shirts. All right. Now, one thing to note right away, by, by the way, guys. Oh, that didn't work. There we go. All right. Funny Valentine's Day. One thing to note, and this is what I was trying to illustrate earlier, by the way, that I didn't have a screenshot of, but you see up here in the top left corner, it says like one through 48 of over 3000 results. That 3000 is probably more like 300,000. Okay. So they're just not telling us uh, more data than they want to give up. Yesterday, there was a comment. Someone was like, it'd be great if Amazon gave us like impressions, click through rate. And like, yeah, it would be great. But Amazon is like the last people I would expect that from because they, they're very, um, you know, tight with their data. So 
just worth noting that over 3000 results means these keywords are going to make it quite hard to succeed with being ranked on. Like if I want to rank on very high level, very generic, very valuable keywords like this funny, funny X, you know, X holiday, um, probably going to need ads because all of these shirts that we're going to see here on page one are most likely, you know, they've been around. If I had to guess, they've probably been selling on Amazon for a while. And they probably have a bunch of sales. Now, Amazon's been good with their algorithm of cycling in new submissions, giving new submissions a chance to rank. Okay. That doesn't necessarily mean that your product's going to get a chance on page one on keywords like funny Valentine's Day, but it means it might. Uh, but again, like, you know, and this is just me personally speaking, like I don't work at Amazon. That would be the surefire way to tell you that definitively. Uh, but, you know, you can kind of see it here. The first shirt, 75 reviews. Number two, number three, number four, zero reviews. All right. And if you mouse over, you can see date first available, November 13, 2021. Date first available, November 24th, 2021. Date first available, January 7th, 2022. All right. And these aren't ads. So um, they do give your shirts a chance sometimes. And because we have DS Amazon QuickView installed, we can see their BSRs here uh, right away without really having to, um, to strain, you know, to, to think too hard about it. If you see no BSR, that means that the product hasn't sold yet, by the way. Uh, but generally speaking on high value keywords, you know, you're going to see BSR on like every product. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys this. And since, you know, I typed in high level generic keywords, I typed in funny Valentine's Day. Why don't I scan through the results and find something like this? Valentine's Day shark. Okay, let's try that. So let's look for sub niches instead of just super high valuable keywords, Valentine's day shark. And actually rather than doing it here, what I like to do is do it here on the search merch tool. Cause if you re do a search in Amazon, it's going to start letting in uh, non merch by Amazon products. So you have to come back here and then do a search again. All right. So Valentine's day shark. Now it says 848 results. Now I don't completely trust their, you know, their results number there, but that's definitely better than it's just saying 3000. Okay. So now we're looking at Valentine's day shark. All right. And this person wants to know Ma CH wants to know how to get out of tier 10. Well, I'm going to suggest following the customers and instead of targeting super high level, like generic keywords, like Valentine's day shirt right now, do this. We found a sub niche inside of Valentine's day. And the number of results went from 3,000 plus to 848. Okay, so we made a significant improvement in our competition. Let's check out the BSRs. 92,000. Under 100,000 is like daily sales. 300,000. 26,000, even though it's pizza is my Valentine's Day, which actually has nothing to do with the heart, the, the shark. But another one, 300,000. All right. Look at this, by the way. If you get a good graphic of a heart and you make it Valentine's Day themed, a couple say heartbreaker. But look at this one. I choose you with C H E W S. So another spin on it, right? So you can take one really good graphic and upload, you know, switch the text out and get two different shirts in this niche. Uh, heart crusher instead of heartbreaker, right? Is that what it said before? What did it say before? Oh yeah. It said heartbreaker. This one says heart crusher. Okay. You've got a heart riding a, sh a shark, you know, this is how I would go about. And you can see hammerhead shark is my Valentine's. Mako shark is my Valentine. Now these don't have a rank by the way. So it says rank, not found rank, not found. So this is just somebody's idea. However, it's not validated with sales. So I would probably skip over selling anything similar to those, by the way, I'm not saying, by the way, we're going to talk more about designing tomorrow. You don't just want to steal somebody's design. You want to take inspiration from what's selling and make something that you like, you know, you're using your own mind here and your own graphic design ability. And if you have no graphic design ability, do a text only design is what I would recommend. But we'll talk much more about that tomorrow on the design. Uh, but you can see here, like there's lots of potential. As far as sales go, I'm seeing a lot of rank not found. So maybe this isn't the best sub niche opportunity. But what we just did is we did a search and now we're validating it. We're looking at the BSR. It's quick. It's easy. We didn't have to click into each listing to go and look at the BSR. And, um, you know, we're, we're able to get a, a glimpse at how well something's selling relatively quickly. Now I would like to, okay, Matthew, thank you for the shout out. He said the keyword tool is very helpful. Uses it all the, all the time. Uh, so yeah, being able to do a keyword search guys, he's referring to this.
that filters out non-merch listings is actually very valuable, even at a minimum, just to keep your account safe by looking up keywords. So I want to show you guys, we just did a, uh, a search for a funny Valentine's Day shirt. And then we did a, we looked at one of the sub niches and it, it brought us to Valentine's Day shark. Now we scrolled through page one and initially it looked very promising, but as we got towards, you know, the middle of the page and the bottom of the page, we start to see BSRs like, you know, 1.3 million, 975,000, 700,000. Um, you know, there's one here with a hundred thousand BSR, but it's unrelated to Valentine's day. And then two more that are related to Valentine's day rank, not found, meaning no sales and a bunch of them as we scroll, no sales. So this niche isn't actually that great of an opportunity, but if you're in tier 10 and you want to get out of tier 10, you want to find something that isn't just generic, like funny Valentine's day shirt, like super high level generic. You want to find a pocket, a sub niche that's selling well, that doesn't just have a bunch of like direct immediate ton of competition. Okay. That's my personal suggestion. And I would like to show you now let's pivot really quickly. The pretty merch research tool. This is going to expedite the process for you. You can see that the way we just did it using free tools, it works, but it definitely takes longer because you're going to find some niches that look promising, like the shark niche, which I didn't even plan this. It honestly just kind of worked perfectly. Um, that looked good. And then you scroll down and you're like, oh, this isn't as good as I thought it was. Well, pretty merch pro plus if you upgrade to pro plus, which by the way, there's a discount code in the description of this video. So it's completely up to you. If you choose to up, upgrade to pro plus guys, you get access to the research tab. It also gives you access to the analytics and products tab, which I can do a quick overview for you uh, in the next two days as it makes sense to. But actually, yeah, analytics tab, we'll look at tomorrow because that helps with design, I would say. Uh, products tab also helps, I, generally speaking, pretty much every day. But the research tab, guys. So instead of having to comb through a bunch of shirts only to realize that rank not found, they haven't made any sales. When you use the research tool here, it's going to filter out those shirts for us. Like the shirts with no sales that are irrelevant to us, they're not going to make their way in front of us. So there are, you know, that's just one of the benefits of using a tool like this. Another benefit is that they filter out like the non the, the big brands. So we don't have to scroll through a bunch of like Disney shirts and MTV shirts and whatever. Um, anyways, when you come to the research tab, guys, it defaults to best sellers. If I'm being completely honest with you, like I do a weekly shirt, every or shirt, a weekly show every Sunday on YouTube where I try to suggest like five good niches. It's pretty much where I start my search is best sellers don't provide a keyword. Okay. So we're just getting the best sellers and it's filtering out the big brands because the big brands are going to skew the data. Um, I think we talked, did we talk about it yesterday briefly that like sometimes they show some big, it might've been in my Sunday show where sometimes they give priority placement to a big brand like Nickelodeon or something, even though it's not what we even searched for. So that's going to skew the data here. The whole purpose of using these tools is really to like get to the bottom of this like quickly and efficiently without having to like comb through a bunch of shirts that we can't even sell. So I keep it on best sellers. I don't provide a seed keyword. Um, really, you don't even have to search anything. This is just the default right now. You know, I can I can reset it by the way just by hitting search. So this is the best sellers for merch products, excluding big brands that we can't sell. So this is a pretty valuable thing to be able to see right away. And it's pretty much in order of uh, BSR. However, it's not exactly like you can see the 100 day of school is ahead of the I'm not old, I'm classic, even though the I'm not old, I'm classic has a, has a lower BSR by about 300. The, the sales projection on the, the dinosaur is actually a little bit higher. Uh, but you can switch it to just doing it by BSR by clicking the second one right here and search. And then it just shuffles them. This is probably what I would do, honestly, is just do it by lowest BSR. Um, since that's the Amazon data point, that's really most reliable. The projections are, are projections. So if I'm in tier 10, all I care about is making a sale. I, you know what I mean? Like everything else doesn't matter to me because right now it's not about building a long-term business where I would want to sell evergreens that sell year round. I'm in tier 10. My goal is to get to tier 25 period. All right. That's all I care about and keep my account safe. Of course, I'm not trying to like throw my account away. Well, I want to be in some big niches. The first niche or the first shirt you see here could be indicative of a huge niche, right? But we need to do some validation. It says to-do list, your mom. 
I don't know why it's selling so well, but it is kind of funny. And it's such a simple design, by the way. I mean, come on, that's so easy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the search merch tool. I'm going to say to do list your mom. I think those are the primary keywords search shirts. And let's take a look at the BSRs, you know, because it's, it's one thing to have one bestseller that's absolutely crushing it. But what about the rest of the shirts? Cause you are the rest of the shirts. You're not the number one bestseller. So you want to know how the rest of the shirts are doing. So BSR 300,000, 379,000, 900,000, um, 300,000, 600,000, 1 million, 800,000, 1 million. So it's not that great, honestly. I mean, outside of this one bestseller with a 5,500 BSR, it's not that great. But at the same time, if you are limited in your ability to do graphic design, this is a great niche because it doesn't require any skill to execute this design. You can see they're all pretty. And this person even expanded. <laughs> I know this is kind of a crazy niche to be showing, but like it is what it is. I didn't select the number one bestseller. This person expanded it. <laughs> you know, it says your mom, your sister. All right. Well, hey, they thought outside the box. And they were rewarded with a sale. I don't know how many sales, but you can see 2 million BSR. So they made at least one. And this person expanded it again. You know, your mom, your sister, your girlfriend. All right, all right, all right. We'll move on from this niche. But as you can see here, people are thinking outside the box, making up their own sub niches and being rewarded with sales. Um, is this a niche that you should sell in in tier 10? You can make your mind up. I think you can probably do better. But when I say I think you can probably do better, it's because we need to go find what niche you're going to sell in instead of this one. Meaning we need to find a niche that's selling more product than this niche. Um, clearly this one has a ton of sales being soaked up on the top end by that number one bestseller by this shirt up here. Where'd it go? This one right here, Amazon's choice, you know, 5,500 BSR. This one is crushing it. Um, but we're not going to be that shirt. We're more likely to be the other shirts with like a 1 million BSR um, or, or, you know, or worse. Uh, so where'd we go? So let's check out the other ones. V is for Valentine slash video games. That's that could be a funny niche. You'd have to go repeat the process. Uh, I steal hearts with a T-Rex. You know, you're going to see some shirts that are just evergreens that sell extremely well year round. Like this one, I'm not old, I'm classic. You know, when I see something like this, because I look at the tools regularly, if you look at the tools like once a month, that's not often enough. So you might see something like that and think it's a new trend. When it's not, that, that shirt's always amongst the best sellers. So it's not really telling us anything of value. But these, you know, V is for video games, like that's not something that's always selling really well. So that's something that I would see and I'd be like, oh, that's new, you know? Uh, you see a lot of this 100 days of school. By the way, what do you notice? We're looking at the first two rows of products, all right? We see 10 shirts. Three of the 10 shirts are 100 days of school. Okay, so we're seeing the most repetition on 100 days of school and on Valentine's Day. All right, because we see three Valentine's Day shirts, 300 days of school shirts. If I'm in tier 10, I probably want to be in one of those two niches. Now, I'd probably personally opt for 100 days of school. Just because Valentine's Day just to me feels like the lowest hanging fruit that most people are like, oh, it's, it's January. What should I sell? The first thing that pops in their mind is probably Valentine's Day, if I had to guess. So by just pivoting and being slightly contrarian to 100 days of school, which by the way, I don't have any kids. 100 days of school might've already passed. If that's the case, if 100 days of school already passed, I apologize. But I'm really just saying this, um, You know, first thing you do is actually go do the calculation. When is the 100th day of school? Is it too late? And if it's going to work, go and sell in that niche. By the way, shout out to Detour Shirts. Shout out to Juna. Uh, appreciate you stopping by. Oh, yeah. Juna said he likes that the results are in order of BSR because Amazon does not let you do that. Yes, for sure. Um, really, when you upgrade to a paid research tool like Pretty Merch Pro Plus, guys, uh, the what you're really paying for is the convenience. You know what I mean? In addition to that, the ease of use. Like, we can say, hey, 100 days of school looks promising. So we can come here and say 100 days of school. And you actually can do close match, broad match, or phrase match. This is mimicking how you set up ads on Amazon. Uh, I would leave it on close match initially. And if close match isn't going to work, go to phrase match. All right. That would be the second choice. Phrase match opens it up a little bit broader to allow more results. Broad match is the broadest. So I don't it's not ideal, you know, and if you're going to do broad match, I would only search for one keyword as opposed to like four. Anyways, we're going to do close match. All right. And then we're going to search. All right. So it is got them in order. 
of bestseller to second bestseller to third bestseller. All right. 100 days ends in February, they think. All right, perfect. That's good to know. Um, so you got here. And by the way, you can kind of just scroll through and look for design inspiration because there's a bunch of ways to attack various niches. So here we're seeing like you've got the kind of, you know, four slashes and then the fifth counting, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And they've got, you know, a cool color scheme. I'm not saying to steal or clone exactly how people are doing this, but I'm thinking like when you have a blank slate in front of you, like we're going to do design tomorrow, but like when you have that empty canvas and you have to figure out like what to put in a design, it is useful to see that the number one bestseller has that one, two, three, four, five, you know, when you're counting and you do the, like that, that element, maybe I'll find a way of working that into my design, but I'm not going to clone how they did it. You know, I'm not going to clone the colors or the layout or anything like that, but like, that's an element that I can include in my design. Uh, the text, you know, it looks like all of them have hundred days of school in the design, but they've got, you know, the one beneath it says happy hundred days of school. This one says a hundred days smarter. See, so there's a whole bunch of ways to go about attacking this niche. If I'm in tier 10 and I see BSRs of 14,000, 21,000, 32,000, 36,000, 40,000, by the way, hundred days of school cross niche with baseball. When I see something like this, I'm thinking, yes, like this is something that I want to uh, sell. Uh, this person's trying to get a little too close to, I call this flying too close to the sun. Uh, this person's got like the Harry Potter style design, uh, but they're not affiliated with Harry Potter. This is the type of person that will get banned probably from merch by Amazon. Of course, I don't know that for sure, hundred percent, but I'm guessing that this will not end well for that person. Cause I don't think, I think Harry Potter, if it's in, under that brand, it'll say brand Harry Potter and everything else is just kind of infringing and hoping not to get caught. So hundred days of magical learning, you know, happy. And then instead of hundred days of school, they did a math problem. So this is the type of niche that I would try to be in, in tier 10. And the best part is guys, if you're in there and it doesn't sell, delete them and move on to the next thing. Uh, you want to be agile. You know, you want to price your shirts most likely at 1307. So you get $0 profit when you make a sale because Hey, that's an incentive for a customer to click and buy your shirt instead of your competition, right? Anything you can do, try to take advantage of, just get those sales, get to tier 25. That's really what you want to focus on. All right. I've talked enough. Let's get to some questions and then get out of here, guys. Um, let's do maybe, you know, 10 minutes of Q and a, if there's, if there's that many questions, let me know, uh, what you guys, if you, if you have any, by the way, um, want to be respectful of your time. Thank you for staying till the end. I do appreciate it. Uh, Art by Nabes asked, what is tier 10? So when you get accepted into Merch by Amazon, you are only allowed initially to sell uh, up to 10 different designs. So it puts a little bit of a restriction on your ability to, you know, enter a bunch of different niches and um, really, you know, just experiment. Uh, if you want to experiment and you've already got 10 products uploaded, well, you have to delete one and make room for the new one, but they reward you with sales. So if you make sales, uh, I, it's probably going to be between six to eight sales while you're in tier 10. Then when they do the next round of tier ups, they should take you to tier 25 and then you can upload 25 designs and it kind of just keeps scaling up from there. The highest I've seen, I think is like tier 400,000. Oh, I need to do a video on that. I had a great video idea. Um, maybe I'll record that today and then schedule it to go out while I'm traveling. Um, Cause yeah, I think there's like a tier 400,000 account for sale. Although I have to go double check when I say for sale, by the way, I mean like through empire flippers, there's like a website that you can sell online businesses. I'm not selling it. Um, tier 10 isn't hell, but you can see it from there. <laughs> uh, today is Tuesday. I eat two tacos more today is Tuesday. Um, and it is 2 PM on Tuesday. So how about that? We're getting our twos lined up. Uh, Juna at Detour Shirts, man. Thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate that. I, I don't know what happened with the chat. I, it was like very delayed for a while while I was talking. Um, are you allowed to use keywords that are registered? Uh, if you mean like trademark, I would just kind of defer to yesterday's live stream where we talked about the content policy. We talked about the extended content policy because they have like two different pages. And then we talked about kind of how to validate keywords to keep your account safe. It involves using that search merch tool and looking for the keywords you intend to use. I do recommend doing that. Uh, how late is the video for design tomorrow? It'll be at 1 p.m. again. Um, 
like, it, I, I apologize if that's not a great time. I was hoping that was, you know, going to work for everybody. You know, uh, if there's a better time, I don't know. I think it's just going to be 1 p.m., honestly. And then we'll have the replay. Um, tier 100, up to 10 designs a day. Should I focus on 10 unique designs or one with multiple products? I would do 10 unique <clears throat> until you fill your 100. Because <clears throat> after you fill your 100, you can go in each day and enable the additional products. So I would do it in that order because in order to be tiered up, you do often need to fill your upload slots. Maybe not max like 100 out of 100, but mm, again, it's it's not written in stone, but you definitely can't be like, you know, 25 out of 100 upload slots filled and expect to get tiered up. Like it could in theory happen, but it's most likely not going to happen. Um, so I did want to mention that. <clears throat> Juna said, you may have said this. How many designs do you make for each niche and sub-niche? My personal approach, man, is uh, I, as many as I can. <laughs> like, I usually will be on my side monitor, you know, and I'll be scrolling through Amazon over there. And if I see text, like with the, the shark example, we found at least three different pieces of text associated with shark Valentine's Day. So I would be on notepad over here jotting down notes and typically i'm looking for niches with like 10 10 plus different pieces of text that i can associate with the graphics and being in like the higher you know tier 200,000 uh i can also just kind of make stuff up on my own and you know not have to worry about validating the niches because a used upload slot that doesn't sell is not as big of a deal to me because I, I almost have infinite upload slots at this point you know um Joined late. Thanks for the info. Been unsuccessful at selling at least one shirt. Hey, like, you know what? It's tough at first. Um, my one recommendation is like, if you haven't made one sale, it's kind of like what I'm going to say, you know, if you show up tomorrow to tomorrow's webinar, I will show you actually what I'm about to say. But like, oftentimes you can just go pick a really big, bold font, like impact font and make just a text only design. So we're talking about 100 days of school. Like if you were just trying to make your first sale, I would do a standard t-shirt, 1307 price, white text on a black shirt that says, you know, 100th day of school or like 100th day of school survivor or I survived 100 days of school or you know what I mean? And just put 10 out of 10 of your tier 10 uploads in that niche text only. And when I say text only, it's because if you've made zero sales, I don't know what your designs look like. It's possible they're not that great. I don't mean that to be mean or anything like that. I don't actually, like I said, I'm just guessing. Um, but if your designs aren't good enough, it's better to just do text, you know? Any way to track trademark keywords? Uh, yes, there is. Um, there is. Like, there's various tools. Um, like Merch Ninja, Merch Informer, Flying Research. I, they all have trademark tools where you can add a list of keywords and they will constantly every day check those keywords against the um, the USPTO like database. So if a keyword you're selling on gets trademarked after you've been selling it for a year, two years, whatever, uh, they'll alert you that you need to go like remove that, change that keyword, you know, or remove the listing. You'll show up tomorrow. Cool. Perfect. Uh, Sandeep loves Juna Detour shirts. I do too. June is the best when it comes to design. Tier 10 sales slowed down since designs were rejected. That sucks. Um, eBay platform, there was a flag. Yeah, uh, certain niches, like just across the board, all the e-commerce websites will not let you sell. So that's the world we live in today. Uh, where the flag reduces the appearance of products on search engines. Does this happen with Merch by Amazon? Uh, I haven't looked. I highly doubt it. Um, he was talking about, I did a video where on Redbubble, they were applying a, they were applying something in the source code that, uh, this is what I used to do for a living. Isn't it fun? They were applying a flag to um, basically tell Google not to index it in search results. So let's see. Nope, zero out of zero. I'll try one more search so much text for it to search through that it uh, is moving quite slow. Yeah, it's weird that Redbubble did that. They were basically telling the search engines not to index certain listings. Um, and I think it was at the seller account level, truly. Uh, yeah, so Amazon doesn't even include that that meta flag in the source. 
um, probably because like you don't need to include it. The default, if you don't include it, the default is just to index the content. So signed up back in December. Would it be safe to say that I'll get a reply maybe in March? I would just be guessing. I think when I got in, it was like applied in January 2017 and that was my second application. And then I got in in March. So it took like two months. But that was also a long time ago. It's like five years ago. Great vids. Thanks for, thanks, Jason. You know, I'm not a natural, you know, what's funny is I'm really not guys. I am, I think at heart by nature, an introvert that forced myself to be an extrovert. That's the truth. Um, the scariest day of my life was going to teach a college course at age 25 with no experience whatsoever. Uh, but you know what? It's just like anything else in life. You get through it, you get better every day, honestly. Uh, what can you advise a first time seller waiting for approval? I would just start on Redbubble. Honestly, it's very easy to sign up. You can start uploading today redbubble.com. Uh, it's free. Do I still start new uploads? I personally don't. I said yesterday when somebody asked that like, it was just taking me too long to increase the price after they make a sale. So I got tired of it. So I just upload them at 1999 personally. Got rejected for merch. I would try again, John, honestly. Um, yesterday I said that I know somebody that applied 13 times. That's the record 13 times before they got in. So hopefully you get in on your second try. I, it took me two tries. So Use your super best design. I would, yeah, for sure. When you start out, you have 10 upload slots. Do your best work. Uh, Samantha's designs don't come up on Amazon. Uh, it, if you're in a really crowded niche, I mean, this is just speculation, but like Amazon's Amazon's algorithm is policing or policing. They're trying to figure out what to do with like millions and millions and millions of product listings. So the one thing you can do to figure out if you're indexed at all is view your listing grab the ASIN from the URL and then go to Amazon and search just the ASIN. And the only search result should be your product. And if you don't see it, then it, something's up. Experienced designer in Excel there, week of keyword development. Uh, Joe, we're going to do more keyword stuff on um, Thursday when we do like kind of the upload process, as well as we're going to tie in ads. So on Thursday, um, we'll be busy. I'll have to move quick. Addressing copycatters. Uh, merch by Amazon. It's not really merch by Amazon. It's, it's just Amazon. Like, they make the, you know, when you upload a design to Merch by Amazon, we uploaded at 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. We'll talk about it tomorrow. They make that design available on the front end of product listings. What do you think a web developer did when they realized that was the case? They wrote a script that goes through endless amounts of product listings and you, you literally, it's all automated. It downloads the design and then it uploads it and steals it and, and tries to profit off of it. Uh, it sucks. It is what it is. I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm a web developer. I have no clue how to police that. I don't know what Amazon can do other than us manually report every single time it happens, but it's also extremely hard to identify when it happens. Um, it's a big downside to print on demand. I don't know how it's solved. Um, as somebody with like the technical background and the print on demand experience, I don't know how it's solved. Oh, well, I do know <laughs> they should stop making the full resolution PNG available. That would actually probably solve it overnight. But you know what? It's still available. So I don't know what to do. Um, Juna, shout out, man. Happy to talk about research. 12th attempt. Mike's going for the record, man. Maybe you'll get in on 14. Then you have to let me know. Been rejected three times. Made a Seller Central. Love it. Yes, you can also make a Seller Central account. However, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. It used to be easier. Sometimes now they make you do like a video verification call, like where you need a webcam. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but it does often uh, come to that these days. All right. I think we're at the end of the, uh, of the questions, guys. Thank you for attending really quickly. Going to shout out, um, going to shout out pretty merch. Just remind you that a, you can upgrade, you can use the pro plus features. We'll probably dive back into that tomorrow to get inspiration for our designs before we talk design. Uh, so pretty much pro, pretty much pro plus there's a coupon code. I think it takes 15% off in the description. So um, definitely check that out, guys. Thank you for attending and I'll see you tomorrow.